Great. It is so exciting to be here. Um, my name is Josh Nesbitt. I am lucky enough to be a board member at IntraHealth International, and I'm also the CEO of Medic Mobile. And we're, we're a nonprofit mobile technology company uh, that builds applications for patients and health workers. Um, and today, I'm going to give a little bit of a different talk, so, so hang with me. Um, this is my Twitter handle. That's our company's Twitter handle. Um, tweet me if you have questions about what I'm about to talk about, if you want to be connected to or want information about the innovations I'm going to talk about, um, I would, I'll tweet you back, basically. Um, so I spend a lot of my time translating between technologists, which I'm going to call techies, and global health practitioners, which I'm going to call healthies. Totally made up a word, but I think it works. Um, and I'm going to talk about 10 innovations. And some of these our company is working on, most of them, uh, they're just friends and colleagues, um, but the things that I'm genuinely excited about. I'm going to start with power. So uh, this is a small nonprofit based out of Tanzania, uh, Global Cycle Solutions, and this is uh, a bicycle charger made with $10 worth of local materials. Um, and things like this are springing up all over the place. And I'm going to split the room in half and pretend that you all are techies and you all are healthies, just for the heck of it. And on the left, I'm going to be talking to the techies. On the right, I'm going to talk to the healthies. And hopefully, we'll start to see some trends and some tips and tricks. Um, so at the top, you see um, something that's been going around the interwebs lately. This is a more industrialized version of what Global Cycle Solutions has been working on. This is from Nokia. Um, you also see a, a motorcycle battery charger from Global, Global Cycle Solutions um, and uh, individualized solar panels that are finally hitting a price point about $10 um, that can really scale. And this basically lets us do everything that I'm going to talk about next. Um, this lets a community health worker uh, uh, in their local village uh, run these devices. It takes all of these innovations off the grid. It also can start up micro enterprises. Um, and we'd love to talk about anyone who's interested. So electronic medical record systems, we've heard about this from a couple different people. Um, everything from things like Patient View, which runs offline anywhere there's a mobile signal uh, with intermittent connectivity and smart syncing systems, uh, to uh, web-based enterprise level uh, medical record systems like OpenMRS. Um, and for the healthies, um, we are uh, waging war against systems like this. I was in DRC about two months ago, um, and this is no way to track patients in, in a longitudinal fashion. It just isn't happening. So MMS-based diagnostics. This is one of my favorite uh, things that's happening right now. Uh, at the top, you have CellScope from Dan Fletcher's lab at UCLA. This is basically affixing a microscope, a mini microscope to the back of a cell phone. In the middle, from uh, Diagnostics for All, uh, these microfluidics um, and paper-based tests that give you color gradation scores um, for really simple, simple things. Um, and uh, one of our partners, Dr. Ojean at UCLA, has basically figured out how to hack a $15 camera phone add-on uh, to do lens-free intracellular imaging. So you can slide a blood sample into the back of the phone, shine an LED, and basically capture a holographic shadow image, and then transmit that image by MMS. It lands at the server, an algorithm compares it to a cell library, and shoots back a diagnosis uh, by SMS. And so what that means for the healthies, uh, all my friends over here, is that the, the $200,000 machines that we were using only at urban centers, uh, a, a bicycle ride and two motorcycle rides away to do things like CD4 counts, HIV testing, STD testing, um, we can now do anywhere there's, there's a mobile signal, or in the very near future, anywhere there's a mobile signal for about 10 cents uh, in about 10 seconds. So this is a little bit of a random one. Um, but there's now infrastructure uh, for us to take action at scale as individuals in the US to participate in global health. So we launched a campaign called Hope Phones, and we provide free two-way shipping for individuals, companies, organizations in the US. And it's a green recycling process in the US that provides funds that we then use to purchase local uh, and appropriate handsets uh, in local markets abroad. So we think it's a better model uh, of give one uh, and get one um, that's really letting us, uh, to the people who are interested in the health programs, provide uh, unrestricted funds for hardware uh, where it's needed most around the world. So um, this is actually coming from a, a group from Rice University 
Um, and one of the, the PIs has, happens to be my sister. I'm really proud of her. And they've basically, it's a team of engineering students, and they have crammed more than you would ever believe into a backpack. Pulse oximeters, uh, glucometers, um, microscopes, malaria RDTs. And we're starting to think about how we can then sync this data uh, that's being collected uh, using Bluetooth and then compressing it by SMS and uploading it to servers. Um, and it's going to let us actually, uh, for, for the health folks, um, really basically turn any community health worker into a mobile clinic um, using uh, really low cost uh, equipment. Mapping and micro tasks. So this is something that, that we're hearing a lot about from, from John and others. Um, things like Health Map, which is a web-based platform for disease surveillance. Ushaidi, which uh, we know is for crisis mapping. And you might not have heard about things like Crowdflower, but this is a microtask platform that's basically shown us that crowdsourcing and its output can be reliable. Um, so it's showing us that uh, if you have a given task, you throw as many people as possible at that task, and the output is going to be more reliable if more people are working on it. So it's really exciting. We used this for emergency response after the earthquake in Haiti. Um, and what it means for health programs is that health workers can start to uh, triage and decide where to send emergency services uh, based off location and distance. Um, they can also map in a dynamic fashion who has what and where after, uh, after uh, a disaster. Um, so this is one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> it was Infant Warmer, I know, adorable. Infant Warmer <laughs> and Jane Chen and their team, they're based out of India, and they basically uh, tackled... Uh, uh, incubators with a really simple uh, phase change gel that holds at a particular temperature once it's activated. Um, and this uh, is meant to save the lives of, of premature uh, babies. And you know, they're thinking about how this fits into systems where uh, you have skilled birth attendants at low level uh, health facilities, but also selling directly to mothers, traditional birth attendants, and SBAs in communities. Mobile money is exploding. A hundred different mobile payments platforms have launched uh, over the last year alone. And M-Pesa is a good example. Um, they're now doing $10 million in transactions daily. And I think well over half of those people were previously unbanked. Um, so it's really a true platform that's, that's exploding around us. Um, and it's going to let us start doing things like payroll for community health workers, conditional cash transfers for patients, uh, as well as... Um, really innovative programs like micropayments for health services, um, like, like pregnancies. Machine learning sounds really scary, but it's not. Um, this, uh, this type of learning is uh, natural language processing. So we gave uh, a computational linguist at Stanford six months worth of free form text messages uh, between clinicians and community health workers, and basically said, go nuts. And Rob came back with us and he said, um, I have some artificial intelligence that's letting me with 98% accuracy, auto-categorize these messages. So it's really exciting. Um, and we started thinking that you know, this could start to classify symptoms. So we could give community health workers who are texting in a free-form fashion uh, real-time advice about what to do next. Um, it can also let uh, a clinician or a nurse that's monitoring a stream of incoming text messages basically do uh, real-time triage. And so that when they log in in the morning, uh, the first 10 messages are the emergencies from overnight. And this one's last for a reason, um, SMS made easy. So it used to be that you needed a partnership with a mobile operator and an SMPP connection to their SMSC. And anyway, it was crazy, um, but we're seeing all sorts of really awesome hacks like Frontline SMS, which basically let you take any laptop, any desktop, and a mobile phone with a USB cable or a GSM modem with a local SIM card and set up your own SMS server to do things like message blasts, workflow management, uh, contact and coordination. Um, and we're starting to see randomized controlled trials looking at the efficacy and the health outcomes of things as simple as SMS reminders uh, for ART adherents. Um, and so this is one way that we can bridge this. We can start, we can do randomized controlled trials. Um, but they're expensive, they're a great gold standard. Um, but it's not always going to happen, certainly not with technology. So I want to propose two really simple techniques uh, to get us talking to each other. Um, and the first is for the healthies. Um, technologies, technologists need your needs, basically. Um, and uh, we want your requirements. And I think that I'm really optimistic that if you're specific, um, 
about your needs, you're going to find partners. And for the techies, um, I, you have to forget the idea that your thing is a solution. It is very much a tool that becomes a solution when someone uses it properly. <laughs> and so I think that the thinking about your thing in terms of who is using it, how, why, how often, and creating user stories around your thing is going to let you relate um, to, uh, to people designing health systems and designing how care is delivered. So at the end of the day, I mean, this is the message uh, that I want to deliver. Um, let's talk, because we speak different languages, but we have the same goal. Um, and basically, basically, I'm optimistic uh, that um, if you can deliver uh, on establishing your needs, um, and technologists can listen, uh, and then we can work together to implement these tools together, uh, we're going to change the world. Thanks.